Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So let's continue and see how we can influence the rows that are here based on the date. Now in uh, MySQL here, if we run a query for specific information, so let's go to our database down here and let's see what we have on cells. Now, as you can see here, <coughs> excuse me, once again, now, there are several ways you can read data depending on the date itself. Now, one thing you can do is you can write a query that gets a specific date. For example, if I click in here to edit this, I can copy this data, copy that, hopefully that copied. And then I can go to the SQL tab here and say select all from cells where, it says where one, uh, this is just a way to make sure that it selects everything. Where one, because one is always true. So if we run this, we'll read everything pretty much. But what I want to do is I want to deal with the date column. So I'm going to say where date is equal to, and then I will do that. So I put the inverted commas, of course, because there are spaces here, but it's always just a good idea to put inverted commas on values. So where date is equal to that, and there's a specific amount of information, uh, amount of rows that has that specific date. Now this date is very specific to the number of seconds that happened during this time. Now, we can't really uh, do this because, we can't use this because this is too specific. If I'm here and typing in a date to start with and date ending, you don't want a user to be typing in the seconds as well. Because if I edit this in line and uh, let's see here, let's remove the time variable there. Let's just leave the actual date and then go. You see that I don't get any results, even though there are items on this particular date. So how exactly do I change this? Well, since we are dealing with date and time, there is a year here, there is a month, and there is a day, and then there are seconds, right? Hours and minutes. Now, if we want to single out just the year itself, all we need to do is do this, for example. <clears throat> so we can say selector from cells where, hopefully you can see this, let me try to zoom it a bit more. Uh, selector from cells where date is equal to that. Now, instead of doing this, we'll say where year, and then we wrap the column that has that year around the year. This is a function, a MySQL function, like this, right? Now, it's case insensitive, so you can use small letters, it doesn't really matter. So where the year of this column is equal to that. So what, what MySQL would do is it would just capture the year and see if it matches. So let's see if that gives us good results. And as you can see, everything that happened in this year works. So we can do the same for the month. So you see there's two and then there's three here, right? So there's something in the third month, but other things in the second month. And then there are days just like that. So in the same way, we can do exactly that. The month here is two that has the most um, items. So we can say where month date is equal to zero two. Or let's just do two, let's see that. Go. And as you can see, it returned. Even though you see the month is zero two, it did recognize that this is the second month. And as you can see, every record with a third month does not appear. We can verify that by putting a three there, and then this will give us one record, which is in the third month. So in the same way, we can do the same with a day. So I hope you're getting the idea here, uh, and then we can do that, see? I'm not sure whether we can do that for seconds and minutes. I have no idea, but uh, what's the harm? We have day, we have hour. Let's see if hour works and we want our 10, right? Let's see if that works. And there it is, it actually works. So our minute, I guess, 
and second. So this is how exactly you can choose to the last second to get this height, uh, whatever row that you want based on the date. So you can see how we can utilize that here. But you have to keep in mind, let's, uh, let's say for example, you want to retrieve data for day number 11, right? So I can do something like day, date is equal to 11. And then I'm going to say go, right? Now, the, this looks so good. You know, you can say, okay, day 11, that's that. Now, the problem is if we go to next month, we are still going to have a day 11 in next month as well. So if I want to get records of day 11 from a specific month, I have to be more specific. So I have to say something like where, and what I'll do is I'll start with the month where month date is equal to, let's look at a month here that is viable, that is month two, and then we'll say and, I don't know whether the double and percent works here, I have no idea. And then here we have a day 11, let's test this and see if it works, or maybe it's just for PHP. Okay, so month, so here we're specifying both the month and the day of what we want and as you can see it worked oh so the double one percent works actually that's nice i actually never use it here i use the actual and okay so you can see that and as well you may think oh this is okay but it isn't because next year there's still going to be a month two and a day 11. so you have to make sure that you get the year as well and say year date is equal to 2022 and month and day. This way you are very specific exactly what you want. Okay, so from this, we can now construct our own, uh, our own content, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'll do here is edit this and copy that as my query. So let's go to our content here and in the admin controller we're going to go to where we have the cells. Now word wrap is on. Now if you don't want this, word wrap is uh, where let's say like this line goes over the other side. So instead of continuously going there to create a scroll bar, it wraps around the page. But I usually don't like this. There are times when this is useful. But I usually don't like this. I want to be able to scroll if I can't see everything because uh, it, sometimes it confuses me. I end up thinking this is another line of code, etc., etc. So I don't like that. But it depends what you want. Now, if you want that change permanent, you can go to settings. <coughs> Excuse me. So the settings in here, because we are all coders and programmers, is not like the settings in other programs where you just tick and click some stuff. Here you have to actually code your settings. So if I maximize this, you see whatever we add here becomes a setting, okay? You add it in here as JSON data, okay? And then here we have the default values. So you can copy a default value here and put it here, then it becomes the preference, right? Mm -hmm. This is the default. This is the user edited. So instead of changing the default value here, change it in your user preference settings here, much, much better, so you don't destroy things. Now here I can just do a search because this is normal text here. I'm searching for word wrap and there it is, I found it. So it says auto. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this and put it here. Now, because this is JSON, I'll put a comma and put something else there. So word wrap instead of auto. So they're usually instructions here. Um, so maybe set to true, false or auto where it's so scored. Okay, so that's good. True, false or auto. So word wrap is false for me by default. I want to put it on false. 
and then you save you just press ctrl s and save and then you close once you close this one it closes both and that's it so if i open a new tab now it won't have that word wrap again which is evident if i click here again let me close that and open it again so there isn't word wrap by default all right then so that's how you change settings <coughs> oh that's how you change settings there okay so at this point we have the start date and we have the end date that are sent by the user now we want to put those guys into a query so instead of having this i'm going to duplicate this right and then put an if statement i'm going to say if not empty uh, start date okay the start date and will never be empty because regardless they're going to have a no value so instead of using empty let's just put them inside the if statement like this if that or end date right if any of these are true <coughs> So if start date, okay, I think let's just start with start date there. What I'd rather do though, is instead of rewriting this code, I would rather write a query instead. So what I'll do is, let me write a query here so that we change just the query itself. And then I'll get whatever is in here, cut and put it there. And then here, I'm just going to put query. That way I don't have to retype this code. I can just change what's in the query and then put it there. Okay, so that's the original query. But if the start date exists, okay? So if there's a start date and end date, okay, we'll complicate things for now. For now, I just want to do this. For as long as there's a start date and end date, I think, both must be on for this to work. Then let's change our query, okay? Let's put her there and let's do something. So select her from sales and then it goes order by, but here we want to put a where close because we have specific things to read now. So since it has to do with the date, we're going to have to select what year. Uh, so let's simplify the, I'll make the query as simple as possible. Where year. Now I need to know the year of the start date. Okay. So what I'll do, this is a date here. So I'm going to use the date function in um, uh, PHP to get uh, wait a minute okay before we do all of this let's just uh, echo out a few things so that you can see what's going on so first of all I want to echo <coughs> a date using the date function now you can create a date by simply giving it a format like this ymd and then our second uh, minute sorry and then second like this so if I were to echo this you would see the current date so let's see that and you can see it there okay so that's the current date but then let's come back here if you do provide you put a command provide an actual date here then it will show you the current date that is here now before I do that <coughs> if I remove all of these because you see this is year month day if I just remain with the Y then I'm extracting just the year itself as you can see there okay I can do the same with the D small letter D if you use capital D that's something else uh, capital letter M is something else it to show in form of text let me show you that if I do that oh wait it doesn't show in form of text does it uh, actually it's double M let's see MM 
Okay, so there's several things you can do. There's capital F as well, which is the actual text of a month. Anyway, uh, let's use what we already use now. So small letter for month will give me the month. Now, instead of all this, <coughs> as you had seen here, there was this current date here. But if I want to put a specific date, I can put it right there, like start date. Now, start date, if you remember, it's in the format of this stuff right here. So let me, let me actually put a actual date like that one and then hit go. So now it's causing an error in the debt function. It's saying must be of type integer. So it's saying argument number two. So this is the thing, uncode type error on date function. It, of course, it tells me what the line number is, which is line number 26. No surprise, that's where we're editing. But it's telling me that argument two, which is this one of this function, must be an integer. Luckily, there is a function that converts an actual text date into an integer. So we say string to time like this. That's the function which will convert any date into a an integer timestamp. <coughs> so if I do this, you will see that if I refresh, I get this. You see, this is the date that has been represented there. It also has time there in seconds because I specified that I want to see the hours, minute, and seconds. But because those are not provided in here, that's why they're zero, zero. If I were to remove this, then I won't see those zero, zeros there. Okay. But then I want to show you the output of this string to time. What does this actually do? So first of all, I will do this because uh, don't mind me rambling about this. I just want you to understand what's really going on here. So if I echo the date like this, okay, clearly this is the date here that we got. That's there. The only difference is the slashes uh, dashes here, but I can convert this into a, I think it's called a Unix timestamp. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a Unix timestamp though, but it's converted to this. So let me show you that. And that is that. So you may be asking, what is this number anyway? This is the number of seconds since 1970 up to today. So 1970 to now, this is the number of seconds that have passed. So if you just uh, put the word time here, like time, the function time, it will give you the current number of seconds from 1970. This is the number of seconds up to this date, from 1970 to this date that I've given it. But right now, because I've just put the time function, it will show me the current number of seconds. So if I refresh, you see it's bigger. If I refresh, it keeps moving, as you can see, because as the number of seconds are changing, you can see it change over time. You see? Okay. So that's what this is, and this is the acceptable value. So you can always change this value into an actual date. By doing this, you can just say date function like this, and then you just want to get the, the, the hour, the minute, and the seconds, right, of time, which is current time right now. So this second argument sets in an integer, which is we are getting from the current time, and then we are converting that to hours, minutes, and seconds using the date function. So if we do that, you can see now that's the current time. Okay, so it converts that into current time if you give it the number of seconds from 1970 up to now. That's what's going on there. All right then, so now that you understand how to convert those things, let's make uh, <coughs> actual variables here, right? So let me remove this and let me cut this out. I will need this. Okay. So in here, I just want to get a bunch of variables going. So the first thing is I want to get the year. Um, so this is the start year. So st year, that's the start year, is equal to, I will paste this. So it's equal to the date, string to time, start date. But I just want the year, so I'll remove everything here, out. 
okay then duplicate duplicate then i want the month then i want the day oops i want the day so start day start month okay so hopefully you are getting the hang of this then we duplicate this and do the end so that we just have the variables as we need them okay so i'll say end year since end is short anyway and then i'll just change this from start to end because it's now the end date so now we have everything we need from the month of starting month start uh, end year and etc etc et so let's make a query using this <coughs> so what i'll do is this is the query now so we want where the year of the date column in this table uh, should be equal to and here we will have start year okay because that's the beginning now like i said it's always nice to have um, i'll put them there because these are not uh, values that i'm worried about i'll put them directly there instead of using prepared statements in here so let's do that and then we'll say and month date is equal to instead of year we got month okay and uh, day date is equal to <coughs> Did we say day? Uh -huh. Start day. Okay. So this, all of this is for the first part. But as you can see, it should be between dates. But for now, let's just try and get records from a specific one day. Right? So let me save that. We will ignore, this query is going to ignore the second date. But let's put it there just in case. But just keep in mind this is all we're looking for now if we look at our date this 28th march i just want to get that one 28th march and then let's hit go and as you can see one record was returned because there was only one record on that day and you can see that it's actually working if i cancel these guys go it brings up everything else as it was let me zoom out so there was on the 17th of February, right? So let me click here. Let's go to February and 17th, right? And then go. And as you can see, every date is the 17th here. So it's actually working. But let's do a between this date and that date in the next video.